before I jump into today's video, I want to let you guys know about something that is in headquarters right now and potentially only for today. It makes a little bit of sense that it is like this with CWL New Orleans going on right now. But if you head over to Major Howard's, you can actually end up seeing that there is a new order which gives you a little bit more than you may be used to. Previously, orders give you a supply drop, some bonus XP, 25 social score. But there is one today that if you go and check out some theater content, that's something in which you end up getting a supply drop and 500 social score. So for those of you guys grinding out social rank, you of course know that this is something incredibly massive. 500 is something that is a nice chunk right off the bat for simply watching content in the theater for, honestly it counts you as watching theater if you end up just jumping into the theater. You don't even have to stay in there. You can just jump in and jump right back out and it'll complete the order for you. So 500 social score for probably five seconds of work in the game, that's definitely worth it. So make sure you go check that out, take advantage of it, get that 500 social score before it resets if it does. I'm not sure, but just to be safe, jump on, try it out, get it for yourself, and of course, free supply drops, nice. But that said, wanna let you guys know about that real quickly before it goes away, but let's jump into our regular content. So if you guys have checked out some of the streams in the past couple of weeks or something, you might have noticed that a lot of people ask me if I'm going for Chrome Camo Switch. My answer is always yes, but in a very casual manner. I don't necessarily hardcore grind each camo, I just primarily stick to a few weapons, do the camos, and over the course of maybe a couple of days, I'll complete them, and therefore it's kind of like I'm going for it, but I'm not actually actively engaging in it or thinking about it entirely where it consumes me, where it's all that I do. I play just to play, and if it happens, it happens. So that said, I've been playing with quite a few weapons within World War II as of the past couple of months to try and get some stuff done. I got Sniper's Diamond, I got probably half of ARs and SMGs done, maybe a quarter of the rest of the other weapons done as well, but the classifications themselves still have a little bit of work. But that said, I've come into contact recently with some weapons that I might not necessarily consider all that amazing or use 24-7. And so today I want to talk to you guys about three weapons that in my mind, because I don't come across them very often in multiplayer, you guys may think this is an absolutely absurd list, but three underrated weapons within World War II that you can absolutely shred with, weapons that I think are way better than people may give them credit for. So once again, it's a subjective list and based off of what I see in multiplayer, other people trying to use in game, and I don't come across them all that often. Granted, of course, they are still there, but it's up for debate, and I want to let you guys know about these ones that I've had a great time with recently. So, in that aspect, it doesn't change, but you can also feel free to contribute your thoughts and your list of maybe underrated weapons in the comments below if you want. That said, let's jump right into it. The first one that I want to talk about is one we've talked about many, many times here on the channel, just because I love it, I keep coming back to it, and even though I already finished it gold quite a bit of time ago, it's so good that I keep using it consistently. That's the M1941, the default rifle within World War II that honestly is insane. And this is one that you might not necessarily think about because there are some solid rifles in the classifications. You got the BAR, you have the STG, you have the hot topic of discussion right now, the M1 Garand. But this one is one that, you know, you don't really think too much about the default weapons within each classification. I know that I primarily pass up a lot of the default weapons in every single title. It's just kind of a habit because you start to expect that the better weapons are locked behind rank. And that's something that, of course, you might not think too much on if you use that default weapon. But this one is one that drastically stands out to me. It breaks that mold of recent years. And you throw on things like, for my class setup, a quick draw, high caliber, steady aim, and extended mags. Well, this thing just becomes a powerhouse. It's already great in its base format, but when you throw on these attachments, it just gets even better. And the thing that I really like about this is the fact that it is a base weapon. I can go into a prestige and know there's a weapon that I will use right off the bat. That's something that really I think is nice because in previous titles, once again, you don't really have that necessarily luxury. And of course you have the weapons that you can end up perma unlocking. You have the MP40, the SVT, those other division specific prestige weapons. But a lot of the times, you don't necessarily want to use an SMG all the time. You don't necessarily want to use a single-shot semi-automatic. And that's something that this helps to remedy that situation, where you have a powerhouse available at all times. So while we have, yes, touched on this weapon before, I think that it's definitely worth checking out again. And of course, if you guys have not played around with it at all, you still need to get gold with it. Firstly, gold camo with this thing should come as a cinch because it is a headshot machine. The recoil is incredibly easy to manage. All you have to do is slightly pull down on your right stick and the kick is essentially almost vertical, just plain vertical. No off to the right or left. 
it's very easy to manage and something that depending on the gameplay you might see that I actually try for headshots and I can get so many I've actually had people think that I keyboard in the comment section of some videos whenever I use it before which to me is hilarious but nonetheless that just shows how good it is when it comes to the headshots but that said it's gonna move us over into the second weapon that I want to talk about and that's one that I talked about when we ended up getting the beta we ended up having the early beta even whenever I went out to sledgehammer and captured some footage there there's a weapon that I absolutely loved from then, but I really kind of had to disconnect with it at launch, but then I came back to it once again, trying to do headshot challenges for it. Now, I'm really starting to enjoy it. That's the grease gun. Now, this is something that I have a certain class set up right now, just because I ended up prestiging the weapon, something that I don't normally do, which I kind of regret doing, simply because I want to get the best class setup for it possible at all times, and I took that away from myself. But the grease gun is something that is incredibly mobile. It has the highest movement speed of any weapon in World War II, if I'm not mistaken. And that's something you can just run around, you toss on airborne, you're just flying around the map at that point. And that's something that is always really nice. I love the run and gun playstyle. But the only thing that I don't like about this is the default rate of fire. So if you end up having rapid fire for this thing, it helps out tremendously. It gives it a little bit more kick, yes, but it is something that kind of regulates it more so in line with a more standard rate of fire, so it makes it a little bit better there but also I'll try to run quick draw and extended mags on it but for the time being whenever I did not have the weapon completely maxed out for its weapon rank and I did not have rapid fire available that's something that I'd run just a quick draw and then extended mags on it so I didn't have to reload every five seconds with an ener with the energetic basic training so I could sprint again faster coupled with airborne that's something that you literally can just sprint around the entire map and the entire game essentially that's awesome I think but one that is a situational thing I would wouldn't necessarily use it if I wasn't trying to get across the map 24 7 so that's something that is again a very situational class setup I wouldn't necessarily recommend it but also once again once I end up getting to that max rank for this weapon that's when I'm gonna throw on rapid fire again put on primed or maybe just toss out something like a quick draw since we know that sprint out times are already a little bit interesting and how they work and they're not going to be changed so coupling the two is kind of an interesting choice and therefore you can afford to take off quick draw in that sense and so i don't know if i'd run it once i rank it up but the dynamics change whenever you end up unlocking this rapid fire because it is something that i think is great for the weapon and probably one of the most crucial attachments you can put on it that said also another base weapon here for another classification this one being an smg though so you always have this available and can rock it at any time whether or not you're max level of a prestige or if you're level one and depending on which division you ended up choosing at the very beginning of the game that's one that it's going to just allocate it immediately once you end up prestiging as your default class say if you were airborne division so that's something to keep in mind and of course i think this is one that works out well now the last one i want to talk to you guys about is one that i don't necessarily see anymore because it's kind of over the hype phase of it but it is still out there maybe more so than these other two i think but still a weapon that is fantastic is the sten now, this is one that, as we talked about many times before up on the channel as well, DLC weapons are intentionally made to be middle of the pack or lower than the base weapons than the one are already in the game because otherwise you end up having those people that legitimately will cry out, DLC weapons are pay to win. And that's something that while we have seen it, yes, in the video game industry before, it's not always the best scenario to have on your hands as a developer, as a publisher. So a lot of the times what we've seen in Call of Duty is that these DLC weapons will be intentionally made to be middle of the pack. But this one is one that I feel can kind of stand out because it is unique in some of its properties. The mobility makes for a fantastic use in almost any situation. The damage drop off is comparable to that of the best of the SMGs offhand. I don't have the statistical values at my desk with me right now, but it's something that this has a great drop off. I can range people. The recoil is incredibly manageable, and I think that's one of the things that I love the most about it is that I can go into a medium range to potentially a little bit more so on that longer end of the spectrum for the range of the weapon. I can go into those engagements and not really have to worry about losing my shots in the recoil, and I can stay on target for the most part. So that's something that all all these sort of factors really work well together and I know that a lot of people have asked me recently over on Twitter and in different stream comments and everything like that what class setup would I run on this one I don't have it solidified just yet so don't take this as the class setup that I want to push out there necessarily but I really am enjoying quick draw extended mags and steady aim on this thing right now so if you guys want to try that out 
feel free to, but the Sten itself, again, is a very mobile weapon, and as somebody that loves to run and gun with this, that's something that I think is fantastic with this. But that's gonna round out the top three here in my books, at least what I've been rocking right now. Again, this could change for me next week, in which I find a weapon that I don't necessarily use all that much, or that I don't come in contact that much with in multiplayer that I absolutely love, so maybe we keep you guys updated with some weapons like this in the future if you want to see more, but for now, give these ones a try if you guys have not, because they can shred, and I think that they will, assuming that you can end up adapting to a little bit of their attributes, more so than what you might be used to in just the PPSH, the bar, the car 98, other weapons like that that you see everywhere in every single match. So, that said, try these out, let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below, all subjective, all once again, just me giving my thoughts on some weapons that I think you guys will enjoy. I'm not saying in any way, shape, or form these weapons are all the time criminally underrated, but definitely try them out if you guys have not. That's essentially where I want to be with this. Not trying to assert anything or anything, but hopefully you guys enjoy it. And if that said, if you guys did, make sure to drop your thoughts down there in the comments firstly. And if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a thing with World War II. We're going to be keeping you guys up to date with everything you need to know regarding best tips, tricks, news, class setups, underrated weapons like this you might not use and may come to love actually some of these weapons. But if you want to stay up to date with any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, now out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. Mine is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.